In this episode, we'll be replacing the rocker cover gaskets on our trusty barrel, but more importantly, while we're in there, we'll be showing you how to go from this to this. Ooh, shiny. Don't touch that. Why does that always happen? How does she know? Hey guys, it's been a while, but welcome back to Brownie's Garage. The last time I was in front of this camera, we were wrapping up our NA Performance Mod series on the Little Barra in my BAXR6 Falcon. Plenty more to come on this car with the parts collection for our turbo conversion nearly complete. So keep an eye out for that series coming up and make sure you subscribe to check it out. But while we prepare to stick a spoolie boy on the side of the poor NA engine, it seemed like the perfect time to pretty a few things up in there. We will of course show how to change all the rocker cover gaskets while we're in there, either as preventative maintenance as it is on this car, or if you've already found a leak and need to attend to it. These gaskets cover both the main rocker cover gasket that runs right the way around the outside, which if it fails should normally be fairly obvious. You'll see an oil leak from between this and the head and it'll normally run down the side of your head and engine block. Perhaps a little less obvious if it's right down the back, but you should externally see the oil leak. It also covers each of the gaskets for your spark plug holes. And if those fail, it can leak oil into your spark plugs, causing poor spark and misfire. I'll be using a Permaseal gasket kit for this that you can pick up for around $100 or just under. For now, let's cover how to paint your rocker cover, and this will apply to almost any car with an exposed metal rocker cover like R1. This can be an awesome first engine bay mod for someone who hasn't done a great deal of work on their car in the engine bay, and it can be done pretty cheaply while still getting some really cool results to show for it. If you're like me and you wanna do this bit by bit, take your time and not have the car down for any length of time, then you can quite often pick up a spare rocker cover from a wreckers. I've picked up one for $20 from the local pick apart and being a self-serve wreckers, it has the added bonus that you can have some good practice of doing this, removing it from a car that you don't particularly care about breaking and it's never gonna run again anyway. In saying that, don't be that guy that breaks everything else on the car at the wreck just to get one single bolt off, you know? Someone else might have use for what you've just broken. Try not to anyway. Now, before I get started, I will say that it seems like just about every Tom, Dick and Barry thinks they're a painting expert or will have a conflicting idea of how you should be doing things. Don't let that deter you. Do a little bit of research, read up on your products and how they recommend to do it, but then just give it a crack. You're not gonna be able to follow everything perfectly. There's too many ideas on how you should do this. And I'm no expert, I can do it. Just have a crack, it's not going to kill you. In saying that, there seems to be only one thing that almost everyone agrees on, and that is that prep work is the key to a good paint job. So let's have a look at our supplies for this job. And with that in mind, we'll start with our cleaning and prep work materials. I'll start with any old degreaser to get rid of the bulk of any contaminants. I've also got wax and grease remover and paper towels. Ideally, you'd use some lint-free cloths, but I've had good luck carefully using good quality paper towels for small jobs like this. Some sandpaper, I've got 240 and 400 grit there. Some Scotch-Brite pads may also work well if you've already got a good finish on the surface and just need to scuff it up a bit to help the paint stick. I've got these small brushes for any hard to get to spots. Probably not entirely needed, but handy if you have them. Again, not entirely needed, but I've got a small fine grade file. There are some casting imperfections and odd bits and pieces I may want to smooth out with this. Moving on to our paint supplies, and this bit will vary a bit depending on your product. 
This is completely up to your personal taste. There's a huge range of colors and effects that you can get, so you can have some fun with this. Most paint stores or auto stores will also mix custom paints to any color you like and put them in a can. So you can even match your factory color or pick a wild color that isn't out there. It doesn't need to specifically be high temp paint. And I think with some heat resistance will generally be okay. And that should cover most paints anyway. Let's run through what I've picked out for today and I'll be sure to update in the comments for just how much I use of each of these. For the best result, a base coat or primer is good, but you can often get away without this. For our product, however, we need this base coat as it will affect the final color and finish. Your choice of color, which for us will be this deep anodized look red. Clear coat, which will largely be for extra shine and depth, but also a little extra protection. This can be left out if you're really doing this on the cheap. Some masking tape for any mounting holes or gasket surfaces. And I'm a big rap for these rattle can trigger thingies. Nobody really needs these, unless you have weak soft hands like me. But they make things that little bit easier and consistent, so I use it here and there. It just clips on top of your spray cans to give an easier trigger. And that's it, let's crank some music and get stuck into it then. To start the preparation on the cover, I've removed any rubber parts like old gaskets, and don't forget to push out the two front bolts, like I did. If your cover is old and a bit gross, some degreaser and brushes will help to clear most of this. I've then used my small file to remove any casting imperfections to try and really smooth out the final look. I won't remove these back to completely flush because I'll want to finish this with sandpaper to get the scratches out and I need a little material to do this. I'm then going to give this a really good sand back, starting with the more coarse 240 grit to make this work a little quicker, making sure to really focus on the areas that are more seen like the front section. Man, watching this sped up makes me wish I could work that quick. This looks easy now. I'll then move to our 400 grit to smooth this out a little. Sandpaper grades will be one of those big areas of debate online. Hopefully this 400 will be fine enough to not show any scratches in the finished product once it's painted. I hope so, because this is also the most time consuming part of the job and I really don't want to have to do it again. Okay, maybe not quite that bad, but prep work is really time consuming. I've blown off any of this dust with some compressed air, then it's back to the wax and grease remover once it's looking good, particularly around any of those areas that I'll be taping off like bolt holes and gasket surfaces. Then tape these off. Set the cover up where you intend to paint it and give it a final going over with wax and grease remover. Now the fun part, time to start spraying. The number of coats and recoat time will vary depending on the product and conditions, so refer to the product you're using. Be sure whatever you're using though to start with light coats first to help the paint stick and prevent any runs. I've started with roughly three coats of our base coat, the final coat being much heavier. We'll be leaving roughly 10 minutes between each coat for all of these steps. Next up is our colour and you'll start to get a good look at what your final result will be. Don't get too excited and rush it now though. Light coats first and a heavier coat to finish, three coats in total. And finally onto our clear coat, same principle with three coats. It's probably best to wear an appropriate respirator while spraying, especially in an enclosed space. But I'll assume you're a grown adult and can make up your own mind on this. Damn I love the look of fresh paint. I did get one really small run in the paint, but there's no chance I'm pointing that out to anyone else. Be sure to leave it to dry for a good amount of time. This product recommends three hours before handling. For the hardest finish, some will recommend to bake these in an oven, but good luck getting that past your mum or partner. Instead, just be careful when reinstalling and the heat of the engine will take care of it. Let's get it on there. We've covered removing the coil cover before when doing spark plugs, so let's run through that part really quickly. First, remove your intake piping. On an NA, we have two bolts, a hose clamp and the breather hose. Turbo cars will be similar, but with more hose clamps to remove, a vacuum line for your blow-off valve down the back and an extra nut for the crossover. Undo the Allen head bolts, pull out the PCV and remove your oil fill cap. Be sure to not drop anything down here. Unplug the wiring from your cam phases at the front. It may pay to label these with some masking tape, as well as all the wiring from your coils. I'm leaving the coils and spark plugs for now to give less chance of dropping anything down there while we're working on anything else. 
The throw body needs to be removed to get clearance for the rocker cover to come out in these BA and BFs, so I'll do that now. There's four Allen head bolts for this, and the bottom two are a real pain as it's tight in there. A long T-bar would be really handy for this. Then pull the bracket back a little bit and remove. I've also put a plastic bag in the hole here so we don't get anything in our intake. Unbolt the 7mm bolts and gently pry away the gasket plates over the cam phases. On FGs onwards, I believe these cam phases can be unbolted and removed with the cover on, but this isn't the case in these earlier cars. We'll have to instead move the cover backwards to clear these in a minute. Coils can be lifted out and spark plugs removed. For tips on doing these, see our service and spark plug change video. I'll have a link up in the corner and in the description for this video. I've also removed the vacuum line for the brake booster to make life a little easier. Just remember to put this back on. Finally, we can remove the eight rocker cover bolts, which are a mix of 10 millimeters and T40 Torx bits. Remove the cover by first pushing it back slightly, then lifting over the cam phases. Bring the cover forward and lift the rear to clear the rockers and work it out from there. We can then start to prepare all our gasket surfaces. As I'd already removed the old gaskets from the cover to paint, we'll demonstrate on this one that's just come off. Carefully pry them out, trying to avoid leveraging against any of the surfaces that seal. A trim removal tool may help here as it won't scratch or mark the cover, but it can be managed with a small flathead screwdriver and some care. This kit also comes with a new PCV gasket, so we'll remove that as well. Make sure you pull it out rather than pushing through, or it could be fun to get out from behind the baffle plates in the cover. You can then push in your new PCV seal, using a small amount of engine oil to help as it's a really tight fit. Flip it over and start putting your new gaskets under the cover on, making sure the surface is clean before doing this. Back to our engine for a second, carefully clean off any gasket surfaces around the head with some brake or throttle body cleaner, making sure not to push any material down into the head. It's recommended to put some gasket maker at the two points here where the head and timing cover meet. I'm using some Permatex Ultra Black for this. The cover can then carefully be maneuvered into place. A dab of medium thread locker is applied to all of these bolts when reinstalling. As a rule of thumb, I try to tighten bolts from the center first and work my way out from there in both directions. This helps apply even force and avoid any warping. And yes, I did slip and chip a tiny bit of the paint, which will be covered with the coil cover. Let's just hide that and pretend we didn't see it for now. A torque wrench is recommended for this, but not entirely necessary, with the two front bolts taking just 13 millimeters and the rest 10. If doing this without a torque wrench, be careful as this is very little force and it's easy to overdo it in the soft aluminium threads in the head. New cam phaser seals can then be pushed on. These bolts only need seven Nm, so there's absolutely no ugger duggers needed on any of these. Now would be a good chance to quickly clean out the throttle body with some carbon throttle body cleanup before replacing it with its new gasket. This took some mucking around, but we got it in there. Again, very little force needed on those bolts. Spark plugs, coils, vacuum hose, and all the wiring are put back on making sure to run the wiring where it was originally so it won't get pinched by the coil cover. And this gives us our first glimpse of what the finished product could look like. It does look great, but I don't think I've made my life nearly hard enough yet. So let's play around with one last touch. The plain black coil cover looked just fine, but after going to all the effort on the rocker cover, it was worth trying for something more here, and this is where things got a little, well, weird. Too many of those paint fumes, perhaps. I'm laying down masking tape and carefully cutting around the base so the area surrounding the Ford logo will be untouched. This entire cover has already been cleaned up using wax and grease remover in preparation. As the cover is plastic, I'm spraying a couple of coats of this plastic adhesion promoter to ensure the paint will stick and not just flake off. Then, it was on with a few coats of a similar base coat to what we've used already. This will double as a base and as a silver paint in itself. This was left to dry a while before the next step. I've picked up the cheapest chapstick I could find at the time, which was this 
Baby Lips product. Not sure why you'd want that, but it's a thing apparently. This was used to put a fine coating over anything we wanted to stay this silver colour before our next colour. I hadn't used this method before, but heard of it elsewhere and was keen to give it a go. There are other methods that could have been used, and the baby lips was less than ideal, but I think it will work. It's a shame you can't trust such high-level automotive suppliers such as Maybelline these days though, with my lips now nice and smooth and the chapstick applied to the cover, I went ahead and sprayed this anodized blue. This was again left to dry before carefully rubbing off the lip balm that had been laid down earlier. With that dry and enough suffering and time poured into it, it was time to install our new coil cover gaskets, finish reassembly and enjoy the results. And there it is, our shiny new covers are on. Again, you can do this a little cheaper and a little bit simpler, but I think the extra effort has been well worthwhile and it's not worked out to be terribly expensive anyway. On camera, that red is a little bit hard to catch, but in person it really does look amazing. I'm really happy with how this job has turned out. And as a small added bonus, you'll have some nice new gaskets in there, which could last you another decade or two because if you're like me, you probably only did those because you were taking the cover off to paint it anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing for more coming up and sharing the video with a mate. We've got plenty more to come on this car with the Turbo Series well in the works, but I'm also hoping to do a couple of videos on my first ever car, revealing that, trying to get it to start and drive again as it is, it's been a while, and we can also go through the plans and what I hope to do with that car. If you're keen to see that, let me know. I'm hoping to get working on that one. In the meantime, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.